Welcome to the Appendix, where we read the primary sources of the past so the present can be better understood. Today's primary source, Land Ordinance of 1785, May 20th, 1785, comes to us from Journals of the Continental Congress, edited by J.C. Fitzpatrick. This land ordinance laid the foundations for the public land system followed in most essentials until 1862. Of particular importance were the provisions reserving certain lands for educational purposes. Be it ordained by the United States in Congress assembled that the territory ceded by individual states the United States which has been purchased of the Indian inhabitants, shall be disposed of in the following manner. A surveyor from each state shall be appointed by Congress or a committee of the states who shall take an oath for the faithful discharge of his duty before the geographer of the United States. The surveyors, as they are respectively qualified, shall proceed to divide the said territory into townships of six miles square, by lines running due north and south, and others crossing these at right angles, as near as may be, unless where the boundaries of the late Indian purchases may render the same impractical. The first line running due north and south, as aforesaid, shall begin on the river Ohio, at a point that shall be found to be due north from the western termination of a line, which has been run as the southern boundary of the state of Pennsylvania, and the first line running east and west shall begin at the same point and shall extend throughout the whole territory, provided that nothing herein shall be construed as fixing the western boundary of the state of Pennsylvania. The geographer shall designate the townships are fractional parts of townships by numbers progressively from south to north, always beginning each range with number one. And the ranges shall be distinguished by their progressive numbers to the westward, the first range extending from the Ohio to the Lake Erie being marked number one. The geographer shall personally attend to the running of the first east and west line, and shall take the latitude of the extremes of the first north and south line and of the mouths of the principal rivers. The line shall be measured with a chain, shall be plainly marked by chaps on the trees, and exactly described on a plat, whereon shall be noted by the surveyor at their proper distances all mines, salt springs, salt licks, and mill seats, that shall come to his knowledge, and all water courses, mountains, and other remarkable and permanent things, over and near which such lines shall pass, and also the quality of the lands. The plats of the townships, respectively, shall be marked by subdivisions into lots of one mile square, or 640 acres, in the same direction as the external lines, and numbered from 1 to 36, always being the seceding range of the lots, with the number next to that with which the preceding one concluded. And the geographer shall make returns, from time to time, of every seven ranges, as they may be surveyed. The Secretary of War shall have recourse thereto, and shall take by lot therefrom a number of the townships as will be required to one-seventh part of the whole of such seven ranges for the use of the late Continental Army. The Board of Treasury shall transmit a copy of the original plats, previously noting thereon the townships and fractional parts of townships, which shall have fallen to the several states, by the distribution aforesaid to the commissioners of the loan office of the several states, who, after giving notice, 
shall proceed to sell the townships or fractional parts of townships at public vendue in the following manner, viz. The township or fractional part of a township, number one, in the first range, shall be sold entire, and number two, in the same range, by lots, and thus in alternate order through the whole of the first range, provided that none of the lands within the said territory be sold under the price of one dollar the acre to be paid in species of loan office certificates reduced to species value by the scale of depreciation or the certificates of liquidated debts of the United States, including interest besides the expense of the survey and other charges thereon, which are hereby rated at $36 the township, on failure of which payment the said lands shall again be offered for sale. There shall be reserved for the United States out of every township the four lots being numbered 8, 11, 26, 29, and out of every fractional part of a township so many lots of the same numbers shall be found thereon for future sale. There shall be reserved the lot number 16 of every township for the maintenance of public schools within the said township, also one-third part of all gold, silver, lead, and copper mines to be sold or otherwise disposed of as Congress shall hereafter direct. And whereas Congress stipulated grants of land to certain officers and soldiers of the late Continental Army for complying with such engagements, be it ordained that the Secretary of War determine who are the objects of the above resolutions and engagements, and cause the townships or fractional parts of townships therein before reserved for the use of the late Continental Army to be drawn for in such manner as he shall deem expedient. Thank you for joining us for our primary source today on the appendix. We will see you in the stacks.